What's going on today, YouTube? Today we're going to be talking about Index TTS 2. So I did this in my previous video, but I showed you guys what Index TTS 2, how it could be used for dubbing, and how you could get it installed. Um, and so I took a really deep dive last week, um, up until now, to actually implement a fine training, um, a fine tuning training loop for new languages, and I think I've got it. So. I've been hard at work at this for a week. I had several difficulties with this, so I'm going to be talking about that in the video. And um, I ended up actually accidentally deleting all my progress like yesterday um, uh, because I unregistered WSL2 on accident. Um, and uh, well, I re-implemented it and I have some results to talk about. So I'm very excited to show it off. Um, I don't think there's a training loop out there yet that's been implemented. So, so far, I think I'm the first one that's done a V2 implementation. So um, cool. That's that's actually the fir a first for me. I've never implemented a training loop um, uh, on my own. And so to say on my own would be kind of misleading because I've used Codex CLI to do this. But anyways, it's kind of cool that we we're able to use AI to implement training loops for um, these uh, open source text -to speech models. So um, a little bit of blabbering, but um, Index TTS2, if you don't know, is a, a model released by Billy Billy. And um, it's a very fantastic model that's able to replicate emotion um, in its uh, audio. So I can just give an example. Um, so we have uh, this uh, sample. This is from a video game, um, Expedition 33. And the, the guy here is, is fairly angry. So uh, there's some swear words in here. So I'm going to go ahead and play it. But uh, yeah, this is it. Oh, fuck the mission. Fuck the mission, Lune. So as you can tell, he's pretty mad. Um, and then this is the fine-tuned, trained version in Japanese here. So there you go. Not bad, in my opinion. Um, it, it transferred over the emotion, which is what we've seen with Index TTS2, and it's in Japanese, which is uh, not supported by um, the base Index TTS2 model. So, um, the, I mean, the code and the implementation for it is actually inside of my GitHub repository here, uh, Training V2. It is uh, a work in progress still. Um, currently, I am training uh, Japanese still. Uh, as you can see, we've got the training run going on here. Um, and the loss is still going down. So we like to see curves uh, where the, the loss is continually going down. Looks like we're having a spike down there. And uh, the text loss is down here. And it's slowly improving as we continue training. Um, and so if you guys want to uh, take a look at what was implemented here, um, I pushed it to GitHub. And it's also to save my um, progress because I don't want to delete it on, accidentally, uh, on accident again. Um, and so we can train a new tokenizer for a language and pre-process the data to train on. And then um, it is indeed possible to train another language from scratch with enough data. So I have been training with the Emilia Yoda's data set, um, which is, I believe, 1100 hours of Japanese. And I've actually, for all of the training done here, I've only trained with half of that because I literally just finished pre-processing all of the data. Uh, for, some, for some reason, that took about a day to pre-process 450,000 samples. And uh, so I will be rerunning this training with uh, the full data set to see if that helps improve um, a little bit. So um, yeah, it's still it's still transferring files uh, from Windows to uh, WSL because for whatever reason, this pre-processing uh, training script um, in here fails inside of WSL2 with a segmentation fault. I don't know what's causing it. So I have to run it in uh, Windows and then transfer it over to WSL2. Um, but, um, uh, I mean, it's pretty much just going to be a video of me blabbering about what I've done. So, um, there's nothing too fantastic, uh, that I could else show for inference, like in terms of audio, um, in terms of different samples, I have tested this in Japanese on other, uh, voices. Like let's, I can go and change this to, um, we can do Vivi, um, and inference on this. Uh, I do think kind of the duration is a little broken. So um, this Vivi sample here is about 15 seconds. And the sample that I'm trying to output is, um, you know, the target would be around four to five seconds. So we might get a little bit of issues with this inference here. So the model isn't yet perfect, but 
for the intents and purposes of redubbing into um, Japanese, uh, it seems like it's um, it's coming together to be able to um, adapt the emotion and then the same kind of duration for it. Um, so here we go. We've got it running here. Um, and uh, this finished up, so we can take a listen to it. It's 11 seconds, so I think there's going to be some artifacting in here. <laughs> Yeah, so this one has a bunch of different artifacts. Um, it doesn't actually say the sentence correctly, um, which is here. It kind of said some of it near the end, but I think we've kind of got a little bit of a mismatch with the duration from the input audio um, and then what we want with the output audio. Also, the input audio is Japanese. I don't know if that affects it too much here, but um, yeah, I, I've kind of got to you know play around with it a little bit more to see uh, what happened there. And, um, well, I guess I'll just go into how I did this implementation and how I got a training loop up and running for this. So I'm no machine learning expert or researcher or anything like that. Um, I just dabble a little bit in training these models. Um, and so I don't really have all the technical skills to implement this from scratch. So what I used was Codex CLI, which is OpenAI's um, latest model agent in order to implement this. And I guess I can just go over some of the prompts and some of the uh, ways that I did this with um, ChatGPT uh, slash Codex CLI. So uh, this is kind of how I started off with. So I prefaced it with I with that I've done this before, but I lost all of the data in data deletion, uh, which is actually something that happened. And then so I said the goal is to figure out how to fine tune index CTS2 for Japanese. Um, here's what we uh, had done, and here's the steps we followed. So I outlined kind of the steps that uh, I want to go through with the model to give it all of the context that it needs to help me build a fine-tuning training loop for this. And so I give it the paper for the uh, index TTS2 uh, versions 1 and 2. I give it this index TTS LoRa, which is some work from another guy. Um, I'll show you guys real quick. And then Amphion, which is mask GCT, um, which is used to... Uh, process some of the, uh, which I believe is used to process the audio samples. Um, and so, yeah, I basically, what my idea is, is to give the model um, and collect everything I think the model would need in order to implement the training loop um, and then work through with it step by step to uh, figure out how to process the data, uh, number one, how to tokenize the data, um, and then, or pre-process the data into, you know, uh, NumPy arrays or however it needs to be pre-processed, um, tokenize the text tokens to make sure it can tokenize uh, the language, and then see if we can fine-tune the GPT, the predicting model, to be able to um, output the, the, the correct uh, tokens that we need for Japanese. And, um, you know, that's kind of the uh, high-level overview of how I think about this. And then, uh, oh, how to extend text embeddings of the original GPT model so that it can take a different tokenizer. So, um, yeah, I, I start off with that. I collect all the resources that I need to give Codex CLI uh, the context around what I want to do. And then we basically just go back and forth uh, between answering questions um, and then me answering them. So... What I like to do with agents is to say something along the lines of, before we start doing any coding, please start with clarifying questions about the project as I want to make sure we're on the same pace. So um, I love to do this with any agents that I'm using because uh, I want to make sure that what it's thinking I want uh, is in aligned with what I want. And uh, to do that, you know, I, I make sure that we're on the same page. And then so, yeah, I answer all the questions here um, and then I basically do it again, answer all the questions that are asked here for clarifications. Um, and then the first step that we end up getting to is um, oh, the next one would be. OK, so here what I wanted to do was to test the tokenizer. So I've had issues with training text switch models in the past where the tokenizer doesn't actually work. Um, the tokenizer is what turns the uh, the, the text, the words, into uh, numbers that the uh, model can understand um, and the numbers that the uh, prediction weights are, are stored in. 
so we do that to um, make sure that there are no unknown characters. So that's what these unk tokens are. We should not be getting unk tokens because when we're using the tokenizer, we don't want any unknown characters in Japanese uh, that we're trying to inference on. So I want to test the tokenizer first. Got that and it finished up. So um, these next few messages are um, verifying that the tokenizer works. So here I've got like run verification, please again. And then the next stage, uh, which would be to pre-process the data. And um, I worked to, you know, prompt it to build the pre-processing loop. So here we go. We have this. Um, and then, yeah, just some back and forth between uh, myself and the agent here. And then, you know, I was running into some crashes. And so uh, I ended up moving it to Windows because um, of some stuff that I found online. And then, yeah, so that's the pre-processing. And then it also built the, um, you know, the training loop. And so here I'm reiterating to, you know, change how it saves and everything like that. And then, yeah, it's broken down for the most part into three stages. Um, building a new tokenizer, pre-processing the data, and then the training loop. And so if the training loop had any issues with it, then I would reiterate with the agent to try to fix it to see if we could get the... Um, the model training for what we needed to. So there were two things that I identified that we needed um, or uh, would be good to focus on for loss, which was text loss and mail loss. Um, so text loss, I believe, is um, how accurately it's predicting the text. And then the mail loss is how accurately it's predicting the sound. Um, but I would have to double check and verify. But um, it seems as both of these are going down, the model is getting better and better at predicting Japanese. So it's still in progress. Um, I still have to completely uh, train the model, but that is kind of the gist of how I worked with the CLI agent in order to uh, implement this fine training, uh, fine tuning loop. Um, it might not even be called fine tuning. This is probably just uh, complete training from scratch because what we did was we in, uh, re-instantiated all of the tokens inside of the new tokenizer. Um, so all of the old tokens were actually going to map to these new tokens slash new characters that are in Japanese um, and completely train those um, completely train the weights on a entirely new um, tokenizer corpus. So I ended up also uh, basing some of the um, uh, prompts to look at this repository here so definitely helps out that there was someone who had implemented um, training inside of oh here it is um, training for index TTS um, 1.5 so this repository works for 1.5 index TTS um, and so the pre-processing for the um, data is based off of this repository here so I, I believe, you know, it, it seems that it's working for the version 2 of the model. And so I'm assuming the pre-processing didn't really change uh, too much between version 1 and version 2. Um, the only thing that really changed was the architecture and the add addition of, I believe, the emotion um, and the duration control. So this repository is not um, up to date with version 2. And then there was another repository here, uh, which was for version 1. Um, for the repo. I didn't actually use this uh, one at all for reference uh, to Codex CLI on how to implement a training loop. But yeah, these were the two um, inspirations for uh, um, the pre-processing of the data and then even trying to train a little bit. So actually some history uh, before the full fine tuning run, I had actually tried to implement an a LoRa uh, fine tune, um, parameter efficient fine tuning inside of here. Um, the index TTS v2 trainer, but it wasn't working as I as I needed um, because uh, I, I think we need to train more of the um, uh, attention heads inside of the model. So um, I think we yeah, so we even have yeah, we removed like the Laura stuff in here. So I, I had tried training with Laura and that didn't work. The Laura training was actually from the previously deleted repository that I unfortunately lost. So I think it helped that I did in fact start from scratch here to um, get out um, or to um, get rid of any old remnants of Laura training because I think that might have thrown off codecs in this implementation. But yeah, 
um, pretty much the summary is that the trainer here is able to train, um, it seems like for a new language, uh, fairly uh, successfully or in, is successful in, um, you know, creating outputs for the language. Uh, I, I think I have like another one here. Um, well, I've got Lune that I could try to Im try to inference on, but um, yeah, I guess I'll, I'll stop here and stop stop rambling. Uh, I just wanted to kind of create a video just talking about this because I've spent a lot of time, uh, about a week on this, um, and uh, yeah, it's it's kind of cool that uh, we're able to implement a full training loop with uh, Codex CLI um, and. Uh, yeah, like I said, I, I don't have, you know, previous experience with implementing this from scratch uh, manually. So, yeah, we'll see how this ends up going. I'll probably update a little bit later, uh, maybe release the weights for this uh, to see, um, uh, you know, if people find the, the weights useful. But other than that, um, that's going to be pretty much it for today's video. And uh, once again, I'd like to thank all the members of the channel for supporting me. Very much appreciate it. And I will see you guys later.